Hi, it's Ray here. I hope you enjoyed the last epistle I sent. Uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things that are of cultural significance in Vietnam and how foreigners can really enjoy the locals. If you get down with the locals and you do what the locals do, your experience in Vietnam will be much more positive. It will be very enriching. As a past musician, and still a musician, today I'd like to talk a little bit about Vietnamese music. Don't get me wrong, while, we're, while it seems like we're making a bit of fun of some of this music, I have also worked with some extremely competent musicians in Vietnam who understand Western music very, very well. But today I'm going to be talking directly to the hearts of those of you who are musicians. However, I'm sure the thread of what I say will be easy to understand for those of you who are educated listeners. In the south of Vietnam, in the Mekong Delta, exists a style of music which is called Kai Lun, and it is much loved by the locals, and in fact the government has injected funds to try to ensure its survival, as it seems to be disappearing. And that's a bit of a pity, because the culture is disappearing, it's being overtaken by the Coca-Cola culture. If we could call Cajun music a distinct Delta music of the Americans, then I guess Kai Lun is Vietnam's equivalent. Delta blues, as it were. However, to the Western ear, the worst Cajun music is considerably better than the best Kai Lun. But that's only a matter of perception. Remember, different is not the same as wrong. Okay? To describe Kai Luan is difficult, as it is a very unusual style, to say the least, but it has been around for possibly thousands of years. The guitar is probably, to a musician at least, the most interesting part of the Kai Luan band. I have actually seen, much to my horror, a dobro being used to play Kai Luan music. A dobro is a special type of guitar that has an inbuilt metal sounding board, and it gives a distinctly grating sound. One is sometimes used in, by Mark Knopfler of the Dire Straits, and we can often hear it in blues music from the USA. These instruments are something of a collector's item, and to see one used for this Kai Lun seems to be a tragedy. The sound box is usually rusted so badly that the sound is pretty bad. OK, how to prepare your guitar so that you can play Kai Lun? First, you need to take a perfectly good guitar and immerse it in the river, for about a year so it has a really cruddy appearance and the tuning pegs are rusted so they cannot turn. Therefore the guitar or dobro is permanently out of tune and emits a most unharmonious discord when played. The object is not to play chords but to play endless scales at any chosen place which can change at a whim up and down the fretboard. Needless to say the sound is very strange indeed and no two Kylon guitars are tuned the same. To a musician, it sounds like the player is attempting in vain to constantly tune his instrument, but this is how it is supposed to sound. Added to this cacophony enters a woman clicking, quite often, two broken teacups together to provide a rhythm, totally out of sync to the rhythm of the guitar player, who is presumably attempting to create something. To the untrained ear, up to this point, the whole show may seem acceptable, although there is obviously something that's not quite right. Now the female starts to sing, if it could be called that. If you've ever been to a karaoke night with a bunch of drunken footballers who should most definitely stick to the day jobs, then you will probably recognise the sound emitting from her diaphragm. She opens her mouth and a sound akin to what you would expect from a cat who just dropped into a saucepan full of boiling water roars out of her mouth whilst the guitar playing accomplice to murder shakes his head in the dazed state that is known only to guitar players who are in a rapture over their current creation. After some time, she thankfully stops her wailing, which is definitely very out of key with the guitar player's rendition of their duo, and the guitar player, or some other who has been especially trained to sing well out of key and time, has a bit of a go. Eventually, equally devastating to delicate ears, at better venues, the duo is sometimes joined by a pair of cute little girls dressed in traditional gear who have a go at wailing also, and they too, singing different songs to different rhythms and in different keys. In addition to these little cuties, 
is a bit, bit of a bonus. Most of us can well live without. Soon she, the original female crooner, starts again and they argue as to when she should start again. Then they sing in unison. Different words, different songs, different timing and definitely different keys. After some time, it all grinds to a halt. The type of halt that all musicians recognise the end to a very badly gone wrong performance, which is usually followed by hisses, boos and the delivery of overripe fruit and vegetables to the performers. However, in Vietnam, this slow death of a masterpiece is greeted with cheers and clapping, as the foreigners also clap because it's finished. But oh no, the performance continues as the locals get drunker and the foreigners start to get sick. Well, that sums it up. At one time when I lived in Vinlong, next door to me lived a professional Kai Luan performer family. And the mum and dad often practised and had fights and all. To say I'm a bit over Kai Luan is an understatement. However, this is a traditional treasure. The government recognised Kai Luan as a national treasure to be preserved because so many young musicians are shying away from it in preference for more Western-oriented type music, and I wonder why. Hey, send me a like if you like this video and like this little story. I'll keep doing them if that's what you would like.